Paul says, God allotted the times of our existence and the boundaries of where we would live so that we would search for God and perhaps reach out and find him, though indeed he is not far from each of us, for in him we live and move and have our being. And that got me to thinking, when do you look for God? When do you search for God in your life? And this is a question that's not rhetorical, okay? When do you look for God? When do you search for God in your life? And just to get us going, I know that when I am really sad, that when I'm having a lot of grief and pain and agony, those are the days when I really look for God. When do you look for God? Say again. When you're sad and when you're grateful. When do you look for God? When do you find yourself searching for God? In our prayers. When you're praying. When do you pray? When do you pray? When you need forgiveness and strength. Mm. When, making when making tough decisions. I got a choice to make. Start searching for God. He'll have the answer. When you're in need. When you need a little bit of help. When you're worried. When you're stressed. When I'm afraid what's going to happen next. When you're sad. When you're thankful. When I'm alone. When I'm loved. I think Paul's right in saying that it's the boundaries of life that most cause us to look for God. We named a few positive moments but most of what we named was when we face uncertainty and questions, when we face change and loss, when death feels uncomfortably near. Those are the times we start searching for God. But maybe the more important question then becomes, where do you look for God? When you're searching for God and you're reaching out, where do you look? In your heart, ooh. In the sky, I look up. In the air. Where do you look for God? In nature. What? In your feelings. Say again. In scripture. Life. When you see life in the world, in scripture in your family, in relationships. My experience with the confirmation kids tells me that the first place most people look for God is in nature. You guys named that one. I mean, after all, all of creation was made by God, and Jesus loved using nature to help us understand God. Or people look up to the sky, to the heavens. You know I love space. God who made the heavens and lives in the stars, where are you? If you're a church person like many of us are, I know we also look in scripture, right? And as we search and reach out for God, searching to the bottom of the oceans and reaching the farthest points of the heavens, scouring the scriptures for that one verse that's going to solve all of our problems, Paul says sometimes we miss the truth. He says, God is not actually far away from each of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. In confirmation this past year, each time we gathered, I would ask the kids where they had seen God recently. Because if Paul's right, it, we shouldn't have to search that hard to see God. In fact, if we live and move and have our being inside God, then we should be seeing God on a regular basis whether or not we're looking. Now, I know it's not a question we normally ask, 
where have you seen God? So I gave the confirmation kids some hints on where scripture says we'll find God. John says, whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. So you're right when, we say, when you say we find God in our experience of love. We find God when our heart is being touched. Philippians says, in every situation, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts. Jesus says, my peace I give to you. So we find God, yes, in prayer, and especially in that overwhelming sense of peace that we get after prayer. Matthew says, in Matthew, Jesus says, anyone who welcomes you welcomes me. So we find God in welcoming strangers into our lives. Later in Matthew, Jesus says, where two or three are gathered to work through their problems together in my name, there I am with them. We find God in conflict resolution. So let me ask you, where have you seen God in your life? Where have you seen God lately? Where has God shown up for you? In the smiles on people's faces. Where else have you seen God? When people are helping. In the clouds. In love again. Yeah. In children. In gardening, in the prisons. I was thinking about Matthew 25, you know, the parable of the sheep and the goats. This parable was my undergraduate pastor's favorite parable, so I heard about it all the time in undergrad, and it's since become one of my favorites. In the parable, Jesus says, whatever you did to the least of these, you did to me. In other words, like you said, we find God in people in need. But as I was thinking about this parable, I realized that no matter how many years I've reflected on this story, that's simply not true. You see, the places where I see God the most are when I receive grace or mercy. When people help me during my time of need, during all those times when I'm desperately looking for God, when I'm sad and I'm comfortable, when I'm questioning things, that's when I feel God's presence in my life. When someone shows up in those difficult times and suddenly makes a difference for me, that's when I see God present in my life. Like in college, when I desperately needed a new place to live in this fraternity, weird place to find God, this fraternity took me in just like that, that felt like a God moment to me. On the other hand, when I'm helping someone in need, I always feel like I'm taking God to them. I'm showing them God's love, giving them God's grace, sharing with them the joy and peace of Christ. Like in middle school, when Greg had no friends and I became his friend, that felt like sharing God with him. But that's the exact opposite of how Jesus puts it, at least in Matthew's gospel. Remember those quotes I just gave you from Matthew's gospel? Jesus says, whoever welcomes you, welcomes me. He says, wherever two or three are gathered to work through their problems together in my name, there I am with them. Whatever you do to the least of these, you do to me. I feel like I experience God when someone, when someone helps me in my need. And when I help others in their need, I feel like I'm sharing God. But Jesus says that whenever I am helping others in need, that's when I'm meeting God. That Greg in middle school was the one who was showing God to me. And that when someone helps me in my need, that somehow, and I don't understand how, apparently I am showing them part of God. That in my time in need in college, I was showing God to my future fraternity brothers. 
It's like God shows up in the exact opposite way I always think about it. So I started to ask, if I'm going to search for God, where am I going to find God today? I wonder if that place where I might find God today is in Sudan. I think God's in Sudan right now. Or maybe the Ukraine. You suppose God's huddled somewhere in Ukraine? Or what if we bring it, or, or what if we think about the New Command Korean Church. You know where they find God? Central America, right? Or what if we bring it a little closer to home? Is God hanging out right now in the 53206 zip code, the poorest zip code in Milwaukee? Is God sitting in the jail at the Wauwatosa Police Department waiting for someone to visit him? Is God at the nursing home longing for someone to talk to? Where do you suppose we could find God today? I was listening to a podcast literally this morning. <laughs> Got my sermon all done. I'm listening to this podcast. And they said, what's so amazing and throws me off every single time is when we go on a mission trip and we start serving people, all of a sudden, people start asking me questions about God. Like, at home, at church, they just listen and it's fine and whatnot, but we go, and we go to classes and whatnot, and it's great, but we go on a mission trip and all of a sudden, God seems to show up. It's like when we start serving people in need, God's all of a sudden there. This week, I was visiting Ruth Hodgson. She's in the hospital right now. I think she just, she should have just gotten out. She should be in a nursing home now, but she was in the hospital this last week. And she asked me a question I have heard so many times in my ministry. Why am I still here? It's one, that question is one I completely understand and after hearing it from so many people asking me that question, this is the answer that fell out of my mouth this week. I said, Jesus promises us that he shows up in those in need. Now sometimes we are called to serve and care for others, to go out and meet Jesus in the world. That's important Christian work that we do. That is beautiful, wonderful stuff, and we feel important and accomplished when we go out and serve like that. But sometimes we are the ones in need, the ones who need to be served and cared for. And apparently, in a way that doesn't make any sense to me, it's at those times that we are showing Jesus to others. Now that's quite a privilege. Others need to see God as we see God, need to have Jesus revealed to them the way Jesus was revealed to us. And Jesus says one of the primary places he shows up is in the people who are in need. That means even though you don't necessarily mean to, I mean you're just trying to get help, right now, Ruth, you are showing God to me. You are showing God to your nurses, to your family, to your friends. Because Jesus promised that in you at this moment, he is present. I couldn't think of a greater honor than to bear God's presence to the world. And I'm certain that also means that God must be with you. And to answer your question, Ruth, that means that one day God will bear you up into his heavenly presence. Because in you, somehow, I'm meeting Christ. 
Where do you look for God? Where have you seen Jesus lately? I may not know your specific answer, but I know what Paul says is most certainly true. He says, God is not far from each of us. For in him we live and we move and we have our being. So pay attention because God's going to show up every day. Amen. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to like if you heard good news and subscribe to stay up to date on the latest message. Peace be with you.